And joining me right now here at CPAC is Congressman Ronnie Jackson. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Now, I think the people at home want to understand what's going on in Congress in terms of oversight. Can you give us a little insight into what's happening? Well, we're doing oversight across the board. You know, I'm on the select committee for coronavirus. That's a, a, a big committee. We're going to look into a lot of issues with the origin of COVID and just a thousand other things related to COVID and what happened in this country over the last couple of years. And then, uh, you know, we have the uh, select committee on uh, China in general, uh, looking at the, uh, the, the the influence that China's having over our government, over our economy, uh, and the, the, the influence they're having over other economies around the world. We have a, a, a select committee on the weaponization of our, of our government against our own people, looking at the FBI and the DOJ and some of the stuff that's been going on there. So we have a lot of stuff on the oversight side of the House right now. And I'm going to be honest with you, we also have policy stuff that we're doing. The policy, it's limited to what we can do with policy right now because we don't have the Senate and we don't have the White House. And a lot of the stuff that we do, we put together really good policy bills. We're getting them out there. But a lot of times when they get to the Senate, they die in the Senate. Or when they get to the president's desk, they get vetoed in the president's desk. That's not going to stop us from continuing to push good policy because pushing good policy shines the light on a lot of the stuff that's wrong in this country, right? And let's the American people know that we have answers to the problems, but we are also going to be heavy on oversight until we get the Senate back, until we get the White House back, which hopefully happens in the next couple of years. And that's our focus right now, too. When you have these meetings on these oversight yes. committees, how is the best way to get that information to the people in an async manner so they understand? Well, I think, you know, uh, we, we have to have good people that are doing the interviews and, you know, uh, James Comer's great. You know, he's, he's leading a lot of this. Jim Jordan is phenomenal. I mean, you know, we people like this that are chairing these committees, it's going to be up to the committee chairs to make sure that we get the right witnesses in front of us, right? And so witnesses are important. The other thing that we've got going right now for us is that whistleblowers are coming out of the woodwork, right? And so when we have good witnesses, we have whistleblowers, and we have good people, good members of Congress that are that are, that are are creating great sound bites with their interviews and they're, they're, they're questioning these people, then those sound bites, if they're concise and they get to the point will end up, you know, on TV. And the good thing we have right now is because we have oversight, we're forcing CNN and MSNBC to cover some of this stuff. And they've been ignoring it for two years now because they're part of the problem. But, you know, now they're starting to cover some of this. The people that, you know, that traditionally watch just those channels, they weren't even aware of a lot of stuff that's going on in this country. And believe it or not, they weren't aware of some of the stuff that's going on the border right now, which is hard to believe. But that stuff's coming out right now. And that's because the Republicans are pushing hard on oversight. In what subjects are the whistleblowers coming out on? Well, they're coming out a lot from the FBI and DOJ. Uh, a lot of whistleblowers are coming out there. But a lot of whistleblowers are coming out now from the CDC, the FDA, and NIH talking about coronavirus and what happened there, whether it was development of the vaccine, whether it was uh, the origin of COVID, whether it was the pharmaceutical industry's uh, influence and in, in, uh, their participation in this. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff coming out. So we got whistleblowers coming out everywhere. Will there be any policy that goes into effect in the next year or two that's really going to make a difference in the American people's lives? Well, I hope so. That remains to be seen. And uh, that's all going to be up to the Democrats right now, because like I said, they control the Senate and they control the White House. And I, I hope that there there comes a point, you know, being that there's an election coming up, including a presidential election in the next couple of years, that they realize that they've got to get some wins on the book, too. And they're going to have to reach across the aisle and work with us on some of these issues. I think that there will be. I think that as whistleblowers come out, there's going to be a lot of people scrambling to try to get on the right side of the issue. You already see that happening right now. You see FBI Director Ray come out and talk about Oh, the origins of, uh, you know, COVID. Definitely the Wuhan lab. We knew about that before. Like we've always we've always thought that. Where were you the last two and a half years, right? Uh, you know, DOE. So a lot of people are going to be coming out and trying to get on the right side of all of these issues. And I think that uh, in, in the process, there'll be some members of the House and the Senate doing the same. And hopefully we'll get some legislation passed that will make a difference in this country. So I don't know if there's a lot of wiggle room yeah. for a lot of these leaders, but I think we'll be seeing in the next couple of years a lot yeah. of people waffling yes, on, on a few, few issues. Yeah. Bonnie Jackson, thank you so thank much. You. I appreciate it. Appreciate Thank you. you.